Hello everyone, let's talk about my top five modifications I made for some serious off-road riding on my Yamaha Tenere 700. First of all, what I mean about serious off-road riding? Well, something like this. Yes, I know it's not Paul Tires. Well, <laughs> it's not. As you know, the Yamaha Tenere 700 is not really a race-ready bike from the factory, more like some serious off-road capable adventure bike. If you come from motocross or enduro riding, the change for a big twin-cylinder off-road bike, you will be disappointed how street-focused this motorbike is, at least compared to the race machines. First, you will feel the bouncy and plush suspension, the lack of brake feedback, and when you look around, you will see so many unnecessary parts on the motorbike, what needs to be removed. If you have all the money in the world, then you can go and buy the best setup combination and the most expensive race-ready parts. You will love the bike with those upgrades, I'm sure. But if you are on a tight budget, <laughs> just like I am, and you want to upgrade the most important parts on the motorbike, well, these are my top five picks. Let's see. First of all, the tires. <laughs> yes, it's too obvious, but hey, first I thought the OEM tire is good enough for off-road riding, and then after several drop of the bike, I could already see, well, it's not good enough. <laughs> Maybe for some gravel, okay, but for deep sand or some serious uh, loose traction grants, it's not good enough. The more serious off-road riding you want to do, the more aggressive pattern on the knobs you need. On front, I use the OEM size, you know, the 1990-21. On the rear, I use the 140-80 size tires because in this segment I can find much easier, more off-road capable and more affordable tires. First, I used the Maitas MC23 Rock Rider. It was very good, but a little bit too hard for my needs. So I changed for Pirelli MT21 Rallycross. Both were just fine for medium terrain and some normal tarmac rides. I used the pressure about 1.8 bar. Yeah, it fits mostly in most terrains. When I go long on road, it's 2.2 bar. And when I go some very soft and slow riding, I go down to 1.5, but almost never lower than this because I have no extra protection in the tires against hard hits on rocks. If you have more money, just buy new rims and probably complete wheel for this bike. In this case, you can put on the OEM rim the more road-focused tire, and on a thinner rim, you can put some motocross-ish tires, which you can use on off-road much better. So my second pick is the shock and forks. Yeah, the suspension must be replaced if you want to ride serious on off-roads. If you want to go on the budget way, just buy the KeyTech uh, upgrade pistons for front and rear OEM shocks, and this will be good enough. In my motorbike rear, I got the Tractive Rally Pro rear shock, and it's absolutely amazing. No more bottomings after jumping, no more wobbly rear. You will get the full control of the bike with this rear shock. Front is the Andrea Nimisano Evo cartridge, which are not really off road focused uh, suspension parts, so it was a little bit mistake for me. If today I would upgrade my front, I would probably buy tractive suspension for the front as well. So, my number three tip is some protection for the engine. 
because the OEM engine protector is simply not strong enough to protect uh, from hard hits or sharp stones. So yeah, it must be replaced. My pick was the OEM Rally Protector, which is a simple plug and play with the original four bolts. Yeah, I power coded it to black because it's uh, originally just a silver one. So this way it fits better to this black motorbike. I just thought that for the big holes on the front side, some aluminum grill, which blocks the mud splashes from the front tire. This prevents the huge mud blocks building up on the engine itself, just cools better in muddy conditions. Anyway, there are many perfect uh, bash plates on the market. You just pick whichever you prefer, which material you prefer, but change the OEM one because it's not strong enough. Yeah, let's see more crash protection. And this is my number four pick. And yeah, this time I don't mean the crash bars. Crash bars are good, it protects the motorbike, but this bike is very slim and if you drop it, it will hit the ground with the front part, the wheel and the handlebar. Aye. So this way you need a proper handlebar guard. I got the A-Service X-Factory. I picked this because it has a steel core instead of the aluminum probably more resistant to the bend back to the original form when you crash the bike and it bends. I needed to order an extra distance on the end of the handlebar because this was needed to fit properly on the OEM handlebar. Yeah, my last tip, so what should it be? No, 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 no. It's not some engine upgrade. It's not the exhaust. It's not uh, the brakes. Yeah, brakes are not really good, but it's okay compared to the air filter. Because if you want to ride on off-road, then you need a proper foam air filter for this, at least in my opinion. The OEM filter is just perfect for normal use, but it's not good enough for the amount of dust and sand on the enduro bikes as it gets. So once you get your foam filter, in my opinion, it doesn't matter which one you pick, just pick some branded one. And when you get it, just wash it as regularly as you did on your motocross or on your enduro machine. I picked the off-the-road foam filter. It's some own brand. I ordered it from the internet. And I also 3D printed a little bit cover on it. And this way I was able to add an extra thin layer of foam to use as pre-filter. So this just gets all the big dirt and dust. And when it gets dirty, I just replace this little pre-filter. So this way I don't have to wash my foam filter every weekend. If you insist to use the OEM filter for some reason, it's just fine but you should seriously consider to buy a pre-filter on the snorkel. This should be some foam. You can buy the unifilter foam or funnel web filters, whatever you prefer, just something washable, which you can change more frequently than the original OEM filter. So at last, uh, the bonus. <laughs> Yeah, all these five something videos always have some bonus, doesn't have. So here is my bonus brake upgrade. It's a pretty budget, not the cheapest one, but much cheaper and much easier than replace the whole lines, the removing the ABS completely. So I bought the Camel brake lever. The strong lever with the change pivot point gives a much more firm feeling to control the rear braking point. Uh, yeah, I made a full video about this. You can watch it here on the link. Just see it for yourself. Well, this is it for today. Please let me know in the comment section below what is your best upgrade on your Teneri 700 yet? And what else should I change for a better hard off-road enduro experience? Anyway, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, hopefully see you next time. Ciao.